quest for advanced military technology has entered a critical stage with revolutionary innovations set to transform air combat. Leading the charge, the United States is unveiling a supersonic aircraft that could reshape the future of warfare. What makes the Quiet X-59 capable of achieving astounding speeds while staying undetected? What sets it apart from anything seen before? And how could it alter the balance of global defense strategies? Join us as we delve into the details of the X-59, an aircraft poised to alter the landscape of modern aviation and military power. NASA's latest supersonic venture, the Lockheed Martin X-59, is a game-changer in aerospace innovation. Initially designed in 2016, the aircraft was expected to take flight in 2021, but it's now set for delivery in 2025. Soaring at 55,000 feet, it can reach speeds of 1,500 kilometers per hour, over one and a half times the speed of sound. Unlike traditional supersonic jets, the X-59 emits a noise as subtle as a car door closing, which is about 75 decibels. In early 2016, as winter was ending, NASA took its first real step toward quieter supersonic flight. They chose Lockheed Martin to start sketching out plans for a new aircraft. The company built a small test model, just 9% the size of the planned plane, and put it through months of careful testing in wind tunnels. These tests, which ran from February through April 2017, checked how the model handled at speeds ranging from about 230 miles per hour up to 1,200 miles per hour. While the National Aeronautics and Space Administration hoped more companies would compete for the project when they opened it up for bids in August 2017, in the end, Lockheed Martin was the only one to step forward with a proposal. The Air Force gave the plane its official name, the X-59 Qui SST. By fall, NASA's team at Langley had run new wind tunnel tests using a smaller model, 8% the size of the real plane. These tests were more detailed than before, checking how the plane would handle at steep angles up to 50 degrees, and even as high as 88 degrees at very slow speeds. Earlier tests had only gone up to 13 degrees. The team used lasers to see how air moved around the model, building on what they had learned from earlier tests and computer simulations. In late 2018, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration began an important test phase. They planned to create sonic shockwaves, up to eight per day for two weeks, over different areas. The team set up 20 noise sensors to measure the sounds and asked 400 residents to describe what they heard, paying them $25 weekly for their help. To create these test sounds, they had a special fighter jet, a FA-18 Hornet, dive down from 50,000 feet. When the jet briefly broke the sound barrier, it made two different sounds, a softer thump over Galveston's neighborhoods and a louder boom over the ocean. By mid-2019, Lockheed Martin started putting together the plane's main structure. As they assembled the first pieces, NASA tested a key feature, the external vision system, on a different aircraft called a King Air at their Langley facility. The X-59's unique shape blocked traditional forward visibility, so engineers developed a camera system to help pilots see ahead. NASA's Glenn Research Center planned to test a smaller version of the plane, about one-tenth the size of the real aircraft, in their wind tunnels. These tests would verify if their computer models correctly predicted how air would flow into the engine. In September 2019, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's team spent a week checking every detail of the X-59's design. Once they approved the plans, the engineers released most of their technical drawings, between 80 and 90% of them, to start building the actual parts. The team set a goal to finish the wing the next year. By December 2022, they had built half the plane, and they planned to take it up for its first flight in 2022. Once the plane was ready, NASA planned to test it thoroughly at their Armstrong Flight Research Center. They would use special cameras to photograph the shock waves and sunlight, checking if the plane was making the quiet sonic thumps they designed it for. These tests were meant to be finished by September 2022. They needed to prove two things, that the plane was safe and that people on the ground would not mind the sounds it made. If these tests worked out, it could open the door for supersonic passenger planes to fly over land something that has not been allowed before? 
The test schedule stretches several years into the future. Starting between 2023 and 2025, NASA will fly the plane over communities to gather people's reactions. These tests matter because in 2027, NASA will share what they learned with two important groups, the International Civil Aviation Organization and the Federal Aviation Administration. Based on this information, these regulators plan to decide in 2028 if supersonic passenger planes can fly over land. In late 2022, engineers at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works facility in Palmdale put the engine into the X-59. They chose a General Electric F-414 GE-100, which stretches 13 feet long and can push with 22,000 pounds of force. NASA set its sights on getting the plane into the air for the first time in 2024. In early August 2023, Lockheed Martin showed the X-59 moving out of its hangar for the first time. The company then formally presented the finished plane in January 2024. By November, engineers started testing the engine, getting ready for the plane's first flight in 2025. The innovative supersonic aircraft stretches to 99.7 feet in length, while its wings span 29.5 feet. The plane can lift off carrying 32,300 pounds. Using a General Electric F414 engine, it reaches speeds of 990 miles per hour, though it typically cruises at 940 miles per hour when flying at 55,000 feet. Engineers saved costs by using existing parts. The cockpit setup comes from a Northrop T-38 trainer jet, while the landing gear was taken from an F-16 fighter. The engine delivers 22,000 pounds of thrust when operating at full power with its afterburner engaged. The aircraft aims to be much quieter than previous supersonic planes. Ground tests showed it produces around 60 decibels, about one thousandth as loud as current supersonic jets. The design uses a slim, extended body shape and small wings near the nose to spread out the pressure wave. Later testing in 2018 suggested the plane would create a noise of 75 effective perceived noise decibels when heard from the ground, similar to a car door shutting. For comparison, the Concorde produced between 105 and 110 effective perceived noise decibels. The engine sits on top of the aircraft to reduce noise, though this placement can cause airflow problems at the intake. Due to the streamlined design, the cockpit sits flush with the body and the long, pointed nose blocks the pilot's view ahead. To solve this problem, the aircraft uses a special camera system. This high-resolution camera points forward, covering a 33-degree horizontal view and a degree vertical view, letting the pilot see ahead despite the blocked windscreen. The aircraft uses advanced display systems from Collins Aerospace, installed in early 2019. In the cockpit, Pilots work with ProLine Fusion displays that show them where the air pressure burst will reach the ground. Two camera systems help the pilot see. A Collins EVS 3600 sensor system under the nose helps during landing, while the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's external vision system sits in front of the cockpit to provide the forward view. Supersonic planes break through what was once thought impossible. While military forces use many supersonic planes, only two ever carried regular passengers. The Russian-built Tupolev Tu-144, which first flew on December 31, 1968, and the European Design Concorde, taking off just months later on March 2, 1969. Today, most supersonic aircraft are fighter jets. When these planes pass the speed of sound, they create powerful waves in the air that combine into what people hear on the ground as a sonic boom much like waves building up in front of a fast-moving boat. Breaking the sound barrier took years of research and engineering. The Bell X-1, an American test plane, first managed this feat in controlled flight. It used a rocket engine that produced 6,000 pounds of thrust, running on liquid oxygen and alcohol fuel. Before this breakthrough, several pilots claimed they'd flown faster than sound during World War II when aircraft technology was advancing rapidly. But the first officially recognized supersonic flight happened on October 14, 1947, when test pilot Chuck Yeager flew the Bell X-1. Later, Jacqueline Cochran became the first woman to break the sound barrier in an F-86 Sabre jet. According to records, another milestone came in 1951 when German pilot Wolfgang Ziesa 
flew a captured German prototype, the DFS-346. After being released from a B-29 bomber at 32,800 feet, the plane reached 683 miles per hour, fast enough to break the sound barrier at that height. On August 21, 1961, a Douglas DC-8 made history at Edwards Air Force Base. The crew, pilot William Magruder, co-pilot Paul Patton, flight engineer Joseph Tomic, and test engineer Richard Edwards, took the passenger plane past the speed of sound in a controlled dive. This marked the first time a civilian airliner broke the sound barrier on purpose, and only the Concorde and 2144 would do it again. In the 1960s and 70s, engineers worked on designs for passenger planes that could fly faster than sound. Two made it into service. The Soviet 2144 in 1968 and the European Concorde in 1969. However, these planes faced many challenges. Public concerns about noise, environmental issues, high costs, and later a fatal Concorde crash. These problems kept supersonic passenger flights from becoming common. The way air moves around the plane changes completely once it passes sound speed. The biggest problem is air resistance. It suddenly increases when the plane transitions through the sound barrier. To handle this, planes need much more powerful engines and very smooth pointed shapes to cut through the air. Aircraft engineers face a tricky balance when designing supersonic planes. The wings need to be short to reduce drag at high speeds, but this makes the plane less efficient during takeoff and landing. Special attention goes into shaping the wings to minimize the effects of shock waves. Since these planes must work well at both low and high speeds, designers have to find the middle ground between these opposing needs. Engineers develop different solutions for making wings work at both low and high speeds. One design used moving wings that could change position, spreading wide for takeoff and landing, then sweeping back for high-speed flight. However, these moving wings created balance problems and made planes heavier and more expensive. Another answer came with triangle-shaped wings, like those on the Concorde. These wings create swirling air that helps lift the plane even when flying at steep angles. This works great at high speeds and helps the plane deal with intense air pressure. The downside? These wings must fly at steep angles during takeoff and landing, which wastes fuel. To help with this, the wings need extra flaps. Modern aircraft primarily rely on aluminum alloys due to their cost-effectiveness and malleability. However, these materials have thermal limitations. They lose structural integrity at high temperatures. This inherent weakness restricts conventional aircraft to speeds around Mach 2. Most planes that break the sound barrier, like fighter jets, only do it briefly when they need to, like catching up to another aircraft. Several extraordinary aircraft were designed and engineered to sustain supersonic flight for extended durations. The SR-71 spy plane and the Concorde passenger jet could do this, though they faced bigger challenges from the intense heat and pressure at those speeds. While these rockets could push aircraft past the usual barrier, they consumed fuel so quickly that flights lasted only minutes. Engineers then had to rethink the solutions. They tried turbojet engines, which used less fuel, but could not generate enough power. This led to a brief period where some test aircraft used both engines, a turbojet for taking off and flying slowly, then switching to a rocket to break the sound barrier. The development of the afterburner changed everything. By spraying extra fuel into the hot exhaust of a jet engine, aircraft could now reach extraordinary speeds without rockets. The next advance came with turbofan engines, which direct some air around the main engine rather than through it. This makes the engine much more efficient. Modern supersonic aircraft combine both innovations. They use turbofan engines equipped with afterburners giving them both the power and efficiency needed for sustained high-speed flight. The fastest planes need special engines that work well at both regular and super-fast speeds. Most use a type of jet engine that sends some air around the main part. This helps save fuel when flying at regular speeds, but can still push the plane past the sound barrier. The most remarkable example was the engine in the SR-71 spy plane. It could change how it worked while flying. During takeoff and landing, it operated like a regular jet engine, but at high speeds, it redirected some of its air straight to the back, where extra fuel was burned. This innovative engineering achievement enabled the aircraft to exceed Mach 3, 
a velocity threshold that remains unmatched by conventional planes to this day. The aircraft's unprecedented velocity generated such intense aerodynamic heating that conventional jet fuel would chemically decompose and clog the fuel system. This challenge necessitated the development of a specialized heat-stable fuel formulation. For example, the SR-71 Blackbird Reconnaissance aircraft, which flew at speeds over Mach 3, required a special fuel called JP-7. Regular jet fuel would break down at the extreme temperatures the Blackbird encountered, sometimes exceeding 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 316 degrees Celsius, creating deposits that would clog the engines. JP-7 was specifically engineered with high thermal stability and a very high flash point. It was so stable that the aircraft needed special chemicals called triethylberane just to ignite the fuel at startup. The fuel itself also acted as a heat sink, absorbing heat from the aircraft's surface and cooling critical components during supersonic flight. But getting through the sound barrier is the hard part. A plane needs much more power to push through the air when it's going just below and just above the speed of sound. Engineers found they could reduce this problem by carefully shaping the plane's body to guide the air smoothly, but any sudden changes in the plane's shape still create shock waves. That was why they used something called the Whitcomb Area Rule, which helped them avoid these abrupt changes. When something moves faster than sound, it creates an interesting effect. Picture a runner sprinting past someone while shouting. They would zip by before they even hear the sprinter's voice. This same thing happens with fast planes. When they fly about one and a half times faster than sound, they leave behind a cone of pressure waves that spread out and hit the ground in a curved pattern. But here's the tricky part. These planes need to fly well at both normal and super fast speeds. It's like building a car that has to drive smoothly in downtown traffic and also race at top speed on a track. Getting both jobs done with one design makes everything harder. One of the biggest challenges of flying faster than sound is dealing with heat. When planes fly at very high speeds, the air friction makes them hot. The traditional aircraft metal, duralumin, starts getting soft and weak when it gets too warm, which means it can't handle speeds more than twice the speed of sound. This is why engineers switch to stronger materials like titanium and stainless steel. Take the SR-71 spy plane. It could fly at three times the speed of sound, which made parts of the plane heat up hotter than a pizza oven. The engines face their heat problems. Jet engines work by heating incoming air to create push, but there's a catch. When the plane flies very fast, the air gets squeezed and heated up before it even reaches the engine. The engine parts can only handle so much heat, which means they can't add as much extra heat to create a push. To solve this, engineers had to find a way to get more power by burning extra fuel after the main engine. This is like a car engine that is already hot from running. There is only so much more heat it can handle before things start to break. That's why these planes need special designs and materials to manage all this extra heat. The X-59 marks a big step forward in making supersonic flight quieter and more practical. While earlier supersonic planes rattled windows and startled people on the ground, this new design could change everything. If the tests work as planned, people might one day fly across countries in half the time without disturbing anyone below. Whether this leads to new passenger planes or stays a research project, it shows how far aviation technology has come, letting planes break the sound barrier almost silently. The next few years of testing will tell if quiet supersonic flight is finally here to stay. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.